It was quite a long time ago. It was 1986 and I was just finishing my first degree in architecture and for whatever reason I decided I would apply to what I considered to be the, the top three practices in, in Britain to do my year out. So in Britain you do a year out of study between two degrees. So I applied to the top three and I was offered a job in all three. But I actually felt the work of Austria Associates as it was then was actually the closest to uh, the same kind of design philosophy and aesthetic and uh, so on and so on as, as I um, appreciated and, and wanted to learn more about. So that's why I selected Foster Associates. So I came um, for a year out and ended spending two. So I actually doubled the time I intended to stay um, before I went back to do a master's degree. I think there were about 60 people when I joined and so obviously it's hugely different now. The ethos is pretty much the same although um, you know the culture obviously shifts by virtue of scale so ethos is pretty much the same you know excellent striving for the best result challenging preconceptions all of those things they are what I started right at the beginning within the office and they still are very relevant right today right to this day so. I think probably the difference was that when I first started there were a, a much smaller group of people at the head of the office who defined and directed the, the way in which the work progressed and now it's a much broader platform inevitably of a large organisation. It's a much broader platform of people who have the ability to, um, to drive and shape the way work is done. And to me the success of creative businesses and architecture and, and, and life should be about the diversity and the rich mix of people in its broader sense, not just about men and women. It was amazing. I mean, it was the chance, it was the opportunity of a lifetime because um, it was the bringing together of two great minds. Interestingly, we had permission to build a building that was almost double the height of the one that you see there now. But the conversation between Mike Bloomberg, Norman, all of us, there was a very sort of interesting and quite animated conversation about the scale of the building. And, and it brings together some of what I've just mentioned, which is Mike felt strongly that you should keep the scale of the building lower. And to keep the scale of the building lower, it would inevitably mean that you or I would just feel able to walk through the building. So we're not getting in elevators. We're meeting each other more by the virtue of just moving around the building. We're being better for ourselves because we're using our own feet to get around, not going up and down in a little box. It was about making sure people move around, supporting a better way of working, making sure that the building fitted in, being a good neighbour, he's talked about a lot. And so, for, you know, it was that kind of debate and conversation which was very unique, almost totally unique because, um, because of the nature of the client and the nature of the, the place and, and the building. Preservation and conservation are two very different things. Preservation to me is not as relevant as conservation. Obviously to conserve something you need to give it a future and to give it a future you need to give it a purpose and so I think for architects today partly it's an incredibly sustainable thing to repurpose a building but also to conserve it for the future you need to be able to find a new way to breathe life into it. So in terms of the urban fabric one of the important parts to that project was to not just preserve the old heritage pieces of the museum, but it was to conserve them in the sense of giving them a future. So we took what was an incredibly important, significant, historic um, uh, building, but actually reinterpreted it and reworked it in a way that not only did it give it a future, but it also enhanced the, the, the context it sits in. So we made a public space, but the public space became a very integral part of the museum. It sorted out some issues the museum had. It generates revenue. It does all of the things that future looking um, conservation architecture has to do. So it's the idea of just preserving something for the sake of it, to me is a, 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 an anathema. It needs to be conservation in its purest sense. You know, when people talk about repurposing a building, or not repurposing building or just working with historic fabric, I think it's really important to be able to make sure that sustainability in its broadest sense is encouraged. So yes, it's energy efficient. Yes, in and of itself, just reusing the fabric is very sustainable. But 
people have to be able to work well in it, they have to feel good, it has to engender healthy lifestyles, all those sorts of things. So there's many overlays to sustainability for me, not just energy. Um, it, it's all about people.